Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go! First story Entitled Parent Assaults Me Over a Seat A long while back, I was about 19 and I decided it would be a great idea to take all of my younger family members out on a fun day. Since most of their parents were busy with work that day, and today I planned it would end with a movie, since Frozen just came out, it was an obvious pick for what we would watch. That whole day leading up to the movie, we hung out and played games and so on. Basically, I'm trying to say it was a fun day and this is, was totally unexpected. Fast forward to us walking in a theater and getting in line showing our tickets. You know the deal. Right off the bat, I saw some lady arguing with one of the employees, so... I knew that we should just keep moving and totally ignore the whole situation. I'd grab snacks later and this will be important in a second. I was lucky enough to grab some of the best seats in the theater and there were about 8 of us so we took up the whole row. Right before the movie started I ran out to grab popcorn, snacks, candy, drinks and the good stuff. I grab everything and run back so I'm not leaving a bunch of 7 to 14 year old kids by themselves in a theater. And once I get back, this is where the problem begins. I get to our row and I see this figure yelling at my family about getting the hell away and you're in the wrong seat. Obviously, I'm pretty heated since I realize this is the same lady who is making problems for the poor guy earlier and that she's cussing at literal children. I run over and ask her if there is a problem and she responds in the most evil voice ever who the hell are you? She had the eye roll and everything. I'm a passive guy and don't really like crazy situations, so I always try to defuse nonsense, but it usually never works out. Anyways, I told her, check your tickets. You're definitely in the wrong row. Please leave us alone. At this point, I just sit down, give the kids their snacks and just lay back and not pay her any more attention. After parking at me for a while and seeing that I'm ignoring her, all the while her kid is still standing there watching this whole thing unfold, she grabs my arm and proceeds to suck me in the side of my face multiple times. I'm just straight shocked by this. In not trying to create more of a scene, I just grab the kids and get them out of here. They don't need to see a full-on fight, especially a man fighting a woman. That is not a good look. Basically, I told the security guard who notified the police, and bing bam bob, she was arrested. I totally pressed charges and she served two years for aggravated assault. Plus, I think there was a child protective services investigation into how she treats her kid at home. I bought my cousins and siblings who came with me one thing they wanted from the mall to make it up to them that day. Imagine for seats to watch Frozen, you end up going to jail. That's wild. Next story. Karen expects total stranger to babysit her child, even after being told no. So this is a weird one, not my story, but a friend who messaged me right after it happened to vent. Because what the hell. So Karen moved into the apartment next to my friends a couple of weeks ago. Karen has struck up short, polite conversations with my friend just two times in that period. With the second being yesterday, the day before this whole fiasco unfolded. This morning at about 9am, while my friend was having a nice Saturday breakfast, she gets up at 6am on weekdays. So this was a weekend lie-in for her. Someone started aggressively banging on her front door. When my friend answered, Karen was standing there with her sweet kid, five-year-old girl, who had a little backpack on. Sounding very flustered, Karen said she was very sorry to have to ask this with no notice, but could my friend please watch this sweet kid for a few hours, because Karen had somewhere really important to be. 
Now, something you need to understand about my friend is that she cannot stand kids and has no idea how to deal with them. Like she tenses up and gets super awkward. If a kid so much as waves at her in a supermarket, she is also disabled. She uses a motorized wheelchair sometimes and a walking cane for short distances or when she's pottering around her own home. She lives with her significant other, who is also her carer. Her chronic illness involves fainting spells and a lot of brain fog. So, by her own account, she's absolutely not someone who should be left in charge of a child. Karen has seen my friend using both her wheelchair and her cane, and has seen my friend's significant other helping her in and out of their car. He was working at the time when all of this happened. So my friend responded with a firm no, explaining that her medical conditions meant that the kid would not be safe in her care and that she is not well enough at the moment to have any guests, let alone an unattended kid in her home anyway. Karen immediately flipped from pleading and simpering to hand on hip indignation, at this point accusing my friend of faking her disabilities. Because, of course, if she can walk at all, then she obviously doesn't actually need a wheelchair, right? And threatened to report her to Centerlink, the welfare. All if my friend did not watch the kid for her. Never mind the fact that my friend isn't on welfare, her significant other has a high paying job, and my friend works somewhere between part time and full time hours from home most weeks. She's a damn machine, and I don't know how she manages it. Newsflash, not all disabled people are unable to work, although of course getting employers to actually hire us is another matter, because of ableism. So my friend basically said I am not on Centerlink, and I don't appreciate being blackmailed. Find another babysitter, because I'm not it. And she closed her door. Karen kept banging on the door for a bit, but eventually she left. About 20 minutes later, my friend heard the very faint, timid tapping on her front door. She said if she hadn't been so close to it, she probably would have have heard it. She sighed heavily, having kinda already guessed what was happening. She opened the door and there was a sweet kid, who had clearly been crying, clutching the shoulder straps of her little backpack, and she said very softly, Mommy said I could stay here today. And now, like I said, my friend cannot stand kids. But even she said that the sweet kid was an absolute darling throughout this entire fiasco and the most she ever did was cry. Because her mother is clearly a damn monster. Karen had driven off and sent the girl to my friend's door clearly thinking that if she left my friend with no alternative, she'd just play along and babysit the kid for her. Especially since my friend had literally no way of contacting her. That was wrong. My friend escaped a puce appearance at a young age. And this nonsense made her furious. She got the girl settled in front of the TV with a drink and some snacks. And she called the police. Yeah, my neighbor just abandoned her 5-year-old daughter outside of her apartment. And the kid showed up at my door asking to come in. When the officers arrived, my friend told them the full story and while they were appalled, she said they weren't surprised. One said, you'd be shocked at how not rare this kind of thing is. Which is honestly kind of the worst part of all of this. The officers took the little girl with them and were really sweet with her, explaining to her that she wasn't in any trouble and had done the right thing, and that they were there to look after her and find out where her mommy had gone. My friend found out later that they were able to contact the kid's father, who is currently working on finalizing a divorce from Karen and was also appalled, but not remotely surprised by what she'd done. Here is hoping he gets full custody of the poor kid after all of this. Update. Hey guys, thank you so much for the awards and all the interest in my friend's story. I messaged my friend asking if she had any updates and oh boy, that was an emphatic yes. This morning she had another knock on her door, only it was a dad with a little girl in tow. He went there to apologize for what his ex had done and so he and a little girl could thank my friend for looking after the kid and for calling the police. 
She said he seemed like a good guy who was clearly putting his kid first in all of this, which was really reassuring to hear. He told my friend that, according to his lawyer, her calling the police and handling everything the way she had would basically be a gift-wrapped custody battle win for him. Because what the hell kind of court would ever grant Karen custody after the nonsense she pulled? His lawyer was over the moon when the dad called him. And my friend also asked the dad what had been so important that Karen had abandoned her own daughter over it. Are you guys ready for this? It's so damn cliche. It was an appointment at a nail salon. She brought the girl several times previously and just demanded that the step babysit her and refused to even acknowledge the kid during her me time. When she called yesterday morning to book a last minute appointment, because, well, Karen's, the step put their foot down and told her she could no longer bring her kid to her appointments and would be refused service if she did. The dad also said that Karen had shown up so late to the appointment that they refused to see her anyway. Again, because Karen's. So she abandoned her daughter because she wanted her me time getting her nails done. The dad told my friend that me time is an excuse Karen uses to ignore her kid. Basically, anytime she feels like it. Do not talk to me during my time and so on. The dad also asked my friend if she would be okay to help with his custody battle and he said he understood that her health isn't great and that his lawyer had said the written statement would be fine. He said while it probably wasn't essential, since they had the police report and all, he wanted to have as much evidence on his side as possible, just to be sure. And of course, my friend agreed. Karen hasn't yet shown up at my friend's door to scream at her. So my friend is thinking maybe dealing with the police put some actual fear of consequences into her. Next story. Cousin and his fiancée demand that I give them my house because it's the right thing to do. Two years ago, my paternal grandfather died and surprisingly I was the only grandson to whom he inherited properties and some money. We were all really surprised and obviously the attacks by my cousins were not long in coming against me for being jealous. I sold some properties and with that I was finally able to buy my own house where I went to live alone because I have never had a love relationship and it's not in my plans to have a family. My cousins and I stopped talking for several months until my first day arrived. I decided to have a family reunion in my new house to try to remove distance and problems between us. The whole meeting was very good but at the end of everything is when the problem started. There was hardly anyone in the house. There was only me, a cousin and his fiancée who were helping me to pick up a bit of the mess we left for the meeting. When we finished mostly sorting everything, the following happened. I don't remember the exact words, but it was something similar. We were sitting in a dining room and having some soda. Your house is good looking, the fiancé said. I like it. In fact, we both like it. Preferring to my cousin. It's nice, but uh, isn't it too big for you alone? I mean, this house would be better with a family and not you alone, don't you think? Thanks, but I do not think it's too big for me alone. I feel very comfortable here. Also, it is not the Palace of Versailles. Do not exaggerate. I said jokingly. It is not an exaggeration. I'm serious. Think about it. You are alone and we will almost be a family. And we could use it very well to live here. At that time, she was already pregnant before getting married. I think that's why they got engaged so quickly after a few months of starting to go out together. At that moment, I began to suspect what she wanted to say and where the talk was going. Yeah, it's true. You could go live in our apartment and we stay here. We would be much better. My cousin suggested. Exactly. I tried to discern if they were joking, but no. Those ridiculous idiots were being serious. Excuse me, what the hell? Are you proposing to exchange properties or something similar? If so, forget it. It won't happen. Why would I do something like that? You owe me. After taking away our grandfather's inheritance. He said. 
Besides, it's the right thing to do and it's a lot of space for you alone. Come on, don't be a heartless idiot. And let's just change places. His fiance followed. First, I did not take anything from you. I do not owe you anything. It is not my fault that you did not receive anything. And second, I do not care that you are almost a family. Stay in your apartment or live under a bridge if you want, but you will not have my house. And much less if you call me a heartless idiot. Understand? I don't care. Let's change places to live. You don't take advantage of this house as much as we do. You have much and we have very little. It is not fair or correct. Think of us. We are your family. You cannot do this to us. His fiance said. Listen, he is my family. You're not. I don't even like you. I'm tired of your nonsense. Thanks for coming and never come back. And now, leave my house. After ignoring them as much as I could, I finally managed to get them to go with their envy and nonsense to another place. I cannot believe how entitled people my cousin and his fiancée were to tell me such things, but fortunately I have not seen them since I cut all communications with them. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.